Pressing play now. Hi guys, we're doing a commentary of the new Total Warhammer 2 announced trailer. I have Jamie here because I have no idea what's going on and I have no idea what the hell is the lore of Warhammer. So I'm going to ask Jamie because obviously he knows everything. And I'm going to bullshit my way through it as much as I can. Right, so obviously these are High Elves. No, they're Dark Elves. They're the High Elves. Oh! The, shit. the guys with the big crossbows, they're Reavers, they're Witch Elves, kind of like Assassin type. Okay. Um, pause it. Who's this guy? The mage at the front is either just a random mage or Teculus. What uh, does Teculus do, Jamie? Obviously, besides being well, mage he's, he's supposedly the greatest um, current high elf sorcerer. Right. Um, he actually played a massive part in the end times and in the forging of the Empire's magical... Um, he helped out in the Great War against Chaos, which was a you go in the law. Okay. Saved the humans out of quite a while back. Oh, right. he, he taught magic to the humans. So w would he be the uh, main um, general for the? I'm guessing hero, the main lo the legendary lords for the High Elves are him and his twin brother Tyrion. I think Tyrion. Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> Ty I'm Tyrion. Tyrion. It I'm sure, I'm sure it's that. It. I don't. I don't know if they pronounce it. Slightly differently in Elvish, but it's Tyrion and Teclius, the twins who date their back to the um, original Phoenix King. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I reckon those two are going to be the main legendary lords. But the thing with, with um, High Elves is they've got so many different lords and heroes, they could have so many people to it. Yeah. Which is really quite nice. Well, DLC. Yeah. Day one DLC. <laughs> <laughs> Would. Now. Right, we'll, we'll press play. I'll, I'll touch upon something in a minute because there's a bit in the scene that I'm going to bring up. So I'll press play again. Um, so yeah, they're marching, which is quite cool. They're obviously in Lustry at the moment, which is the uh, new world. So let me just pause it on this crazy bitch. Um, so what were you saying these guys were? That is a witch elf. Basically, um, assassin type dark elf from dark elves and I don't really know much about the Dark Elves, but I know a bit more about High Elves because I had the Codex. Or, oh, right. Uh, army, army Book. book. Army Books is what they called them in Warhammer. Yeah, Army or Books. Codexes. Yeah, that's the thing that's it. So these would be like sort of fast attack. Or, the, or will these be agents? No, like, no, they won't be agents. Looking at this, it looks like there'll be a small group of like, there'll be um, Vanguard deployment and they basically had poison attacks because they coated their swords in, or daggers. In um, some kind of venom, manticore venom, I might have been actually. All right. So, what was, was your speculation in gameplay then? Are they gonna? Because they're in a f like woods, obviously, and stuff. I know how we're introduced to a bit more wood mechanics in the the wood out worlds yeah. DLC. Do you reckon these these people will have an ability that not just to hide in trees? They'll be like in the trees. So when an army comes through the trees, perhaps they could probably jump down. I don't think we'll get that in any Total War game anytime well, soon. It would be a nice aspect, but no, I don't believe we'll have anything like that. Well, you'd have them actually in the trees. <laughs> they just disappear and then they just reappear inside an army. And if they're like really, really good at close combat, they could probably decimate a small group of units or something. Well, I'm guessing they should, if they do like hit and run tactics, they could be able to pepper from the side, just hit the flank, do a bit of damage, then get out quickly. Mm. But of course, that's if they are a unit or they could be agents. Fair enough. Then. Right, I'll press play again. Um, okay, so they're spying on these guys. Now, who's this weird looking uh, creature? Uh, Malekith. You have no idea who he is. Nope. <laughs> he, to me, he looks like um, <laughs> some sort of. I don't know, actually. He's like something out of a Disney film. <laughs> Basically, he's Malekith, the Witch King. Mm. Which obviously I don't know who copied who. Lord of the Rings copied him, or he copied Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right. Yeah, talking. Um, but he is the leader of the High Elves. Dark he, Elves. Dark Elves, not High Elves. Um, and so I reckon the legendary lords will be him and his mother Morathi. Morathi, I don't know if I'm sounding right. Well, yeah, well, yeah. People, people will get the idea of what you're saying. Or it will either be him and her, or quite possibly Malice Darkblade. Is he uh, like some sort of champion he, unit? He's like the general of the Mal of Malekith's armies. Oh right, so he remember. might be. You know, when you start off with three, he might get more bonuses yeah. with more men and stuff. So I, they're like my contenders for the legendary lords of the Dark Elves. 
But he is the son of the original Phoenix King. Right. And the reason he's encased in all his armour is um, he stepped through the sacred fires. Right. Which is what you do to become Phoenix King. He got burnt to a crisp, blasted himself out, barely alive, and got his armour forged onto him. So he's living in constant pain for the past however many millennia. Nice, so that would make him kind of pissed off, man. Yeah, and so his single goal is to reclaim his homeland of Ulf 1. Uh-huh. Uh, from the High Elves who he believes he have betrayed him because he is the rightful heir to the Phoenix throne. So that would be his objective then, essentially, yeah. in the game. Right, okay. I'll move on a little bit. Um, okay, yeah, he does look a bit pissed off. So, what do you reckon the objective is, like, of the campaign? Because obviously this, like, I'll pause it again. This, um, as we know, I'm assuming this is a Lizard Men kind of dealio. Maybe something from the old ones, which who are the creators of the Lizard Men, the, basically the ancient space gods mm. who forged the world. Yeah. So, um, I saw somewhere twenty one to race for the, to the Nexus or something. The Nexus. The Nexus. I don't, I don't know if that's real or not. So maybe there's something that everyone's trying to get hold of, an artifact of great magical power. So maybe you have to hold a certain amount of these things. Yeah. Whatever they do. But I'm not entirely too sure what the map's going to be. It's definitely going to be set in Lustria. But um, for the three races, they, comparing to the old world, the map should be huge if they've had the three, the, um, if it had the High Elves, Dark Elves, and Living Men's entire territories. Because you've got the um, Dark Elves up in Nagaroth, which is equivalent to Canada and Northern America. Right. Lustria, which is equivalent to South America, Brazil, and the main forest, all that. Right. And then you've got High Elf there in Ulf 1, which is sort of like Atlantis. Oh, right, okay. So <coughs> you've got three massive land masses, um, which Ulf 1 itself is probably slightly smaller than the Old World. Oh, right. So what... Where is this in relation to the Total War campaign? Is it set for the South, I'm assuming? No, um, if you imagine, because the, total, because, um, the world of Warhammer is basically set, on, set in the real world. Right. Of, or based on the real world. So the old world is Europe. Yeah. Um, and then, so this is to the West. So you've got Ulf 1 in the middle, and then like the American landmass, which is... Mm. The new world. Right, I see. So yeah, this will take place. So you, you, essentially, you would have to research some sort of technology to go between the two? Or would it be some sort of... I mean, they could do it, because they did it in Empire. So was it in Empire? Total War? Well, well, they, the whole they, they had the Americans as one map, and then you could go to the other map, which was Europe. Yeah, I'm sure that was, um, that was definitely Empire. Yeah. I'm sure that was Empire. So they could have it as two different maps, but then you can then switch between the two. Mm. But that is what they might be able to make it as one whole thing. That would be absolutely massive, but but you know what I mean. Like they could yeah. probably do that. Anyway, we'll... uh, yeah, because he turns this dealio, doesn't he? Uh, is that magic? Is that his magic, or is that something that's on that device that's making the stone like go up? Or is that his magic? I'm guessing it's his, he's using magic to activate it. Right. What exactly it does is so, a map. Right, right, here we go. This is what I want to know. Is what is this? What's going on here? I am honestly not too sure. The closest thing I can work out, if you carry on, go yep. it. The closest thing I can work out to something of this magnitude is uh, during the first Great War Against Chaos. Yeah. Um, basically, the elves created a massive vortex in the middle of their island, which sucked all the chaos energy. Oh, all right, sorry, sorry, yeah. I just got interrupted here. Which sucks all the chaos energy, which originates from the world's poles, mm -hmm. and then into back into the earth, which stops chaos coming through. Right. So is that is he is he is that happening in the past? Is so he looking that into the past? So that's looking in the past. That's the only thing I can work out that is happening at that point from my knowledge of the law. It could be something else. It could be something completely different. It could be something new. But that's what I reckon it is. So, in gameplay wise, could this just be nothing to do with gameplay? It's just cool, or it could you... just be cool, a cool cinematic to make it look fun. And... Maybe I was thinking maybe because I thought I, in my initial reaction was that it was a past event, and then maybe you have to collect these monoliths in order to discover something or research something from a past event that will be able to make you 
have either some other units or be able to stop something or fulfil an objective or something like that? Well, I mean, if they go for the what they went to with the middle path one, which was Chaos of DLC, mm. the release, they could essentially have Demons of Chaos of DLC for this one, which well, is, it's going to be annoying if they do it like that again, but it's, it's their thing they can do it. And basically, there are waypoints set up all over the world mm-hmm. which direct the... We channel the magical energy back into the earth to the vortex. So like the, the winds of magic kind of thing. Yeah, so it could be that they've been disturbed or something, and so you have to go and recapture these points uh, to then weaken the demon forces so they can no longer come back into the world. Well, all right, yeah, that could be cool. Um, you've not you've segued nicely into what I was about <laughs> to say. I just paused it on the elf getting his, an arrow through the eye. Um, do you reckon that the gore thing will be DLC again? Yes. Do you reckon they'll make it free? I'm hoping if you already bought it for the first one, you get it for free. I'm, I'm ho- that was what I was hoping to say, because the reason why they did it in the first place was to lower the, the rating. Keep the age rating. Keep the age rating different, uh, lower. So, yeah, I'm hoping that will be DLC, but free DLC. Even it, I suppose it is worth, what was it, a pound that came out, or five quid? It was, it was less than five quid. I think it was like one pound something, two something dollars. Yeah. Two, three dollars. Yeah. Well, I, I can't remember, but it was, it was a cheap... I know that some people are like, you shouldn't have to pay for this. No, well, you thing. shouldn't have to, but if, if, if they make it a free um, patch upon release, then I'd be fine with that. Yeah, especially if you've already bought it for the first game, then you shouldn't have to buy it, buy it again for this one. No, you shouldn't have to, really. And it's same, similarly, like if you can, like we said, have both maps, then you shouldn't have to pay for the other races. Yeah. If you've got all the other races, you should have access to them. So, yeah. Hopefully this will be free DLC. Anyway, I'll uh, just play again. Uh, yeah. I don't know how to just see his friend get annihilated. Like, oh, I'll put up my shield now. Yeah. One of the things I am looking forward to in I'll this pause it, what? Yeah. is that three of the main races in this one mm. are all have magical powers much greater than anything from the old world. Yeah. But you've got the Slams for the Lizardmen, who are the greatest mages in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got High Elves, who are the next most powerful yeah. in terms and then Dark Elves I could be same with the High Elves so I'm wondering especially they're going to they should bring in new, new laws of magic right so I am intrigued to see how these new laws of magic stack up to the old ones when they should technically be powerfuler so you're expecting massive magical combat like yeah massive... I, I can see magic being a much bigger part in this one than it is in the current or the old or the old yeah now the old yeah. Total War when it comes out yeah. Um, oh yeah. So we see these guys come back. This is the bit. Obviously, lizard men are what I collected for Warhammer very briefly, and I love lizard men because they're lizard Aztecs. You know, couldn't get any better than that. But oh, just the oh, I look at them go the skinks and are they skinks. Yeah, skinks. They're thoruses. Oh no, they're skinks. They're the thoruses. And that's the big frog guy. Slan. Slan. That's the one. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously, this is like just showing you. So. I'll just pause it. On and this. battle the five armies right now. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, obviously, it's obviously obvious where it takes place from your perspective. Because yeah. uh, you've got all the, um, what do you call them? You've got the old temples. And the temples. Place. So it's uh, obviously set in Lustria, the mainly. So I don't know if they're going to have parts of both one, which are just shown on the map, and parts of Nagaroth. Yeah. Or they're just going to have colonies on Lustria, and it's just going to be set all in Lustria. C- could do. Um, I would have thought that... Cause I'm assuming Lustria is mostly jungle terrain. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to surmise that they'll probably have different environments to, how say, they have different maps, different yeah. weather conditions. I well, mean, yeah. It looks, it looks, it looks promising. Um, let's see, I can't remember what else, anything else we need to pick up on. So, like, that's, that's an overview of the map, because obviously, I'm assuming this is the overview of the map. So far, like a, a hint to it, because obviously you've got like this uh, sea region to the top left, this crevasse to the right. Um, anything else you can see on that map? Well, uh, you can only see one major temple city at the moment, which is what they're fighting next to. I believe it will be a temple city because when you zoomed in, it was lots of little little ones. But they've got to come from somewhere, on there, doesn't Yeah, so I reckon lizard men will have most of the map to begin with. Mm. And it'll be their temple cities spotted around. Then you'll have um, coastal cities, which would then include the men, 
the humans who have done exp- expeditions. So like the sort of Spanish... Yeah, because they do have outposts on this. Um, so whether or not you'll have the Empire or it'll be mainly Astalia and mm. Tilly, because they're the seafaring race of the humans, or mainly, and then do the, there's also the um, Nords who love the, the scaling and Vargs or the um, Chaos Marauders. Chaos who, who love going into um, pillaging everywhere they can. Right. So, what would who would be the main focus of this campaign? Then, like, who would be the main not main characters, but you know what I mean, like the the the, the main race that you'd probably play for first because they'll be the most integral to the campaign and have the most cool stuff. Lizardmen or high elves? I would play the high elves personally. I high prefer elves. the high elves. Yeah. Um. You would go for living man, wouldn't you, with you? 100%. Uh, I think... But if I, I think the living man would most likely have a quite interesting um, campaign mechanics. Because they should be something new, because... But in the game, they had the cold blood wall, which meant they started off slow and mm. everything, but then they soon picked up pace. But, um, and they, fo- they followed the teaching of the slan, who were trying to rework the mysteries of the old ones. Yeah. So... I don't know how if they could tie that into the game's cat mechanic somehow, or like you you've been told this by the slard and you must take this place or yeah that will that will probably yeah. be your mission objective markers yeah definitely um, let's just see this out is there anything else because obviously uh, this is obviously the bigger picture this th- what's this is that obviously the tornado thing is that the um, is that the that's either just the random tornado is that the laser beam it, thing it could be sort? it could be the vortex that that. Bring the magic in. I don't know in the law if there's an actual tornado there, if you can see the magic being drawn in, or if it's just invisible to the naked eye or something. So but it is. It is over into the sea, which could be where Ulf One is, because Ulf One's a big landmass just to the east of Lustria. So could it could it be hinting at that was the last objective, and therefore this has now happened, or is it this has already happened? So they're wondering why it's there, possibly, or something along those lines. I'm not too sure. It could be anything at this point in time. Mm. Yeah. We'll probably get slammed for speculating yeah. by some hardcore uh, fans. Oh, but, you do have no hand. Uh, well, the, the, the law has changed so many times. Uh, my most recent law is the end times law, which mm. contradicted so many earlier things. Yeah. So I'm not going to go into all that. Um, but my guess, if, and I'm just a guess here, because sh- it showed the vortex, yeah. which I'm... Which I'm reckoning is going to be the magical vortex, yeah, which the high yeah. created. Oops. Which the um, Slan also had a hand in helping. Yeah. Uh, to get rid of all the demons, but something has happened. The waypoint which brought all the magic in has been disrupted by either high elves or the Skaven, which the Skaven are hopefully going to be in it, as you see from right at the end. Yeah. Which then. Um, so if you're playing as the high elves or lizard men, you have to. Um, reset the waypoint to get the magical powers un- back into control so the demon of chaos yeah. will no longer invade the new world. Yeah. So, and the demon of the chaos would then be the hordes of chaos. Mm. Oh, right, I see, right. So if they, if they complete... So if we're surmising that demons of chaos are going to be in it and they're going to be the the five-pound the, DLC... The, the, the fifth race, the fifth race. Comes and in hordes and like just wrecks everything. So when you play as them, then you'll come through as demons of chaos you've got to win the objective you, and you'll get your haul so basically if you take out waypoints which weakens the magical energies or the mm. strength of the magical energies which means you can make get more demons through either way um, and then if you're playing as a skaven you're helping out the chaos and you're just trying to wreck the lizard men's shit up because that's what you do mm. higher I'm sorry not higher dark elves just trying to retake off one or some other thing if Alpha one's not in it I'm not too sure because they, they were in the law they were sort of allied with chaos but not really what escaping no um dark elves, the dark elves. but the law has changed recently so it's a bit hit and miss at the moment what the game's gonna oh go right with. I see right we'll press play and see this trailer this trailer out because obviously now defend your world so destroy the theirs so I'll just pause again I know I need to stop pausing it but uh, we're assuming that this defend your world, destroy theirs. Does that possibly mean is that a hint to demons of chaos? Is it? Can you go through the the portal and go to their home world? 
Possibly, or it just might be, as with any Total War game, you just destroy the enemy while defending your own. Yeah, so it could just be literally... Or it yeah. could be defend the world from the demons and stop them from... Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, right, so finally, obviously there's a nice title of Warhammer 2 Total War. And there we have the Skaven. So, obviously... Um, just pause it here. I need to, I'll, I'll, I'll pause it actually when it turns around because then you see it's red-eyed. There we are. So this is obviously one of those plinth monolith things. Yeah. That, thingy. And this is the hint. Well, not hint. This is this. This, this only confirms skaven are, are in the game. So. Well, it doesn't confirm it. I don't know what does. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, so you'll have the four races: high elves, um, lizard men, dark elves, and skaven. Yeah. And then you'll have maybe possibly the fifth race is. If they are going to do a fifth race from the release, I'm going to guess Demon of Chaos. That would be my guess. I don't know what else they could have. And then possibly in the future they could add, what, Dogs of War? Well, the last two main races are Tomb Kings and Ogre Kingdoms. Oh yeah, of course, from Tomb Kings and Ogre Kingdoms. Playable in the actual tabletop game. Yeah. And then Dogs of War, which I'm surprised they haven't put them in yet. Dogs, Dogs of War, War I would have thought ages ago, Mercenaries. Um, so where is tomb, the Tomb Kings and Ogre, Ogre Kingdoms in relation to this place? Is it on the other side of the map or is it on yeah, this map? The Tomb Kings and Ogre Kingdoms are back in the Old World. Right. So okay. you know the Old World map. But past the big mountains on the right, the World Edge Mountains, yeah. um, you then get into Chaos Dwarf territory. Ah, Chaos Dwarf. And then well. the Mount of the Morn after that. And that's where the Ogres are. Mm. Which then leads on to uh, fictional China... And all that. that you haven't seen yet. Which we haven't seen yet. Now, it wasn't really a main part in the tabletop game, so I don't know if we'll actually ever get it in this. You never know. that If they do finally do a whole map, they could have them in. Probably not as a playable race, but as a race mm. on the left. And then Tomb Kings are obviously ancient Egypt, so they're basically south of the Old World. South of the Old World, yeah. So, do you... Uh, I don't know how they could... Because we've only had Wood Elves as a major race. I've seen the Beastmen and stuff, but you've already seen them. But the, the Wood Elves were the only sort of race they introduced that they, they had just appeared when the DLC came in. Yeah. You never got them originally as unplayable characters, did you? No, I mean, there was the area set out for them. Which, oh, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, yeah. that that had to be there. But, uh, but yeah. So, would you say that Tomb Kings would possibly be in Warhammer 2 total? Or do you reckon that would be Warhammer 3 total? Warhammer 3, because they're not on the same landmass. Yeah. Um, because I thought uh, the elves would be the last one. In yeah. fairness, because they're on a completely different landmass. They're further away. So you thought Tomb Kings? I thought and... Tomb Kings and Ogre Kingdoms would come out before them, because they would complete the old world, and then they'd go on to the new world. Yeah. I mean, it would probably make more sense to me if they made an expansion pack for Warhammer Total War first with Ogre Kingdoms and Tomb Kings in as, like, maybe, I don't know what they'll call it, like... Um, you know, like, how you had kingdoms yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Like, call it something like that. And then they go on to Warhammer 2 Total War and then, they have, and then eventually they'll have all the races. But if they can stretch it out to three games... The third game would hopefully be every single race and the entire map, including Kathy, which is ancient China, but Nippon, which is Japan. Can they do that, though, if they haven't made models of them? Oh, yeah, they can do them. Can they? I don't, I don't know if they have the rights for them or not. Well, that's the thing. They're not made into models, though, are they? I mean... So they'll have to design an entirely new army and lore and everything. Well, there are sort of... Um, there's law for the, there is law for these places, they're just not in the actual playable race in the tabletop. Yeah, so That's they would have to... And they are based on historical ancient... So like samurai and shit like that. Yeah, so Nippon, which is... Nippon? I don't know how to pronounce that. It, which is Japan. Mm. Um, you've got Kafi, which is China. Mm. You've got Ind, which is India. Right. Yeah. And Total War have already done these places. Yeah. So they could take... They could definitely just take a historical thing and change it up slightly to a more fancy based setting. Well, yeah, they could, but I don't, I don't think that would happen. No. <laughs> Games Workshop would allow that. This is all, hopefully, what if they could... In a perfect world. Anyway, so... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you get the Skaven reveal, and then we get the magical date of 2017. So by the, I would say, what, end of this year... October, November? October, November time, we'll have one more Total War 2. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there we have it. Um, yeah, it, I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the game. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be 
well, no, it's going to be slightly different to Total Warhammer, but nothing groundbreakingly different. I'm hoping that naval combat some t- some uh, point. you're not going to have naval combat ever, because from what I've read, they don't have the right to man of war. Man of war, which is uh, Games Workshops. Naval so, based, so like Battlefield Gothic, Gothic, but yeah. for sea based. Yeah, but they don't have the right for that, so they can't make an actual. They can't make the models and everything for it. In right, game. I see. Oh well, I suppose naval combat never really works out anyway. So, no. never mind. But um, it would be it would it would be good for this because the um, high elves are supposedly the strongest naval race in the world. Right. Com- Arguably, the Dark Isles are strong because they've got the Black Arts, which are basically floating fort- floating cities. Yeah. Um, lizard men probably... I don't... Do we, I don't think lizard men actually have boats. They're probably little, little boats of some description. I mean, they're like Aztecs, so... Maybe, so. but... Unless they just ride massive sea serpents. Sea serpents, or they, they, swim, they probably swim themselves and probably yeah. the ships. No, I'm not really too sure about lizard men. And uh, scaven just literally burrow all the way underneath the ground. They don't... They've got tunnels mm. connected all across the... So oh, maybe maybe sea combat might not be a we'll yeah. appearance ever. Uh, oh, well, never mind. So, yeah, that's our... Well, mostly Jamie's uh, analysis <laughs> of the trailer with me just putting in here and there. So there we have it. We will hopefully learn more as the coming weeks and months when they start drip-feeding us bits and bobs, army lists, gameplay yeah. mechanics, uh, that kind of thing. I can make a few guesses at the Legendary Lords. Now and again, but I'm not. Skaven and the men aren't really. They'll have the they'll have the guy on the the that big dinosaur. Yeah, I can't remember the name. I, yeah, I can't. I'm I'm got, I've poss- got the codex in the garage, the old codex. And quite possibly, I reckon it'll be him and a flan mage piece, one of the main flan. Yeah. Flan the the big the big frog thing. The Skaven, I'm guessing, will be Frank Frankel. He's um, he's kind of like a Skaven mage. Right. Grey Seers, Grey Seers they're called, and he's got a massive Rato as a bodyguard. Oh right. Okay. And then, um, and then Queek is one of the main fighters. Ah oh, right. So they'll they'll have a nice balance there, won't yeah. they? Of fighter, mage, and sort of some sort of yeah. special unit like air attack or whatever. But hopefully they they'll introduce some new game mechanics because. Um, Skaven are basically all based on a new ground. Well, they'll have some sort of burrowing technique so you can yeah. set them So it will be around. probably similar to the underground passageway of the walls and orcs. Um, little men should hopefully be able to move through the jungles quicker, especially if they can Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm assuming they, they will. They'll have some sort of bonuses and shit yeah. um, to do with that, and most likely they'll they'll play, like you said, with the cold blood rule, they'll probably play a bit differently so in terms of fatigue. So, um, yeah, so little men should probably. In battle, they should be slower than the other races, mm. but well, when they have to get in combat, they should be harder to take down. I think also, if it's in a warmer environment, like if the sun's out, guns out, kind of thing, <laughs> they like just they they, yeah. they maybe get a boost to their speed and strength or something like yeah. that. But I if it's like a, a if it's like in the winter time, perhaps something like that. Do they have season two? Right? Season two or whatever, yeah. they might be a bit slow, yeah. a bit more lethargic. I and, mean, Skaven just lots and lots and lots and lots of expendable units. Just yeah. chuck as much as you can at them um, because that's their strategy. Because they have, they're probably like the um, most populated race in the world. That so they've got everything, and they're gonna be clan pestilence most likely. Yeah. Which use um, like gas-based attacks and chemical warfare and things like that to spread disease and everything. Oh, so, might so, so there might be it. rather than vampiric corruption and chaos corruption, there mm-hmm. might be. Uh, plague corruption, plague of some corruption kind. Some, yeah, disease and plague yeah, build up and which stuff. would be interesting. And Pestilence. then, um, high elves probably no, not high elves. Dark elves more hit and run tactics, but they've got good solid forces. Mm-hmm. They might have more vanguard deployment. Yeah, people. And then high elves have a very wide range of special units. Mm. Um, so I'm reckoning they're going to be very expensive armies, but they're going to be hard hitting armies. Yeah. Probably better, a little bit better in close combat and magical ability. Where I, th- I think Lizardmen probably going to be an all rounder. Yeah. A good all rounder side unit with like monstrous units and shit like that to tear shit apart. Anyway, we'll leave that speculation there. We could probably speculate all for for hours, uh, but we'll soon see. Especially when the end of twenty seventeen rolls around, and we get our hands on Total War Warhammer Two, which was going to be awesome. Hopefully. Hopefully. 
So, until next time, guys, we'll see you in a bit. Have a good week. And if I'm wrong about everything, just don't let me know. Yeah, I, I like to know. Co- 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 comment in the box to below. Tell, tell us how wrong Jamie is yeah. and where he's being wrong. <laughs> All right, see you guys later.